Plans for a new waterfront hotel on Lewis Wharf have been meeting with vigorous opposition from neighborhood residents in the North End. There is also opposition from the Conservation Law Foundation. Its concerns are primarily environmental and about the nature of public access to the waterfront. To explain the CLF position is its senior counsel, uh, Peter Shelley. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Peter. You're welcome. Thank you. I want to talk about this uh, plan here. Uh, the renderings are out. Uh, this is going to be a little bit north of Columbus Park, and it's in the, what's now a parking lot. So, I mean, a lot of people say, well, isn't this better than a parking lot? No, actually, in a lot of ways, it's uh, worse than a parking lot. Um, we think it's really irresponsible and dangerous to go forward with this project on that site. Uh, and to explain that, you have to remember what's coming down the road with climate change. Uh, we are already experiencing this with storms, and um, the forecast is that storms are going to become more severe, uh, more intense. Uh, this area is already flooding during uh, regular high tides. Uh, so um, it is kind of a ground zero for Boston as far as uh, climate change and the impacts on Boston from climate change. So we see this as a very important precedent for how the city and how the state are going to uh, prepare uh, for climate change and uh, the storm surges that will be associated with that and prevent those problems from becoming any worse. And this hotel will make those problems worse. Well, we already have uh, bigger hotels on the Boston waterfront. They have boats parked in front of them the way this one might. Uh, are we talking about mainly a, a, a more dangerous kind of plan, or is it just simply that our expectations uh, have changed? Well, we know a lot more now than we did when some of those uh, hotels were developed. We know that sea level is going to rise significantly. We know we're going to have these severe storms. Um, Boston is now estimated to be uh, the sixth most vulnerable city um, in the nation for uh, environmental damage associated with climate change and storms. And this hotel is right in the center of that storm surge bullseye. So. Um, it is not only going to be at risk, uh, but because there's a structure there, it's going to be redirecting waves and all this wave energy into the neighborhoods, uh, and it's just making the problem worse. Uh, Explain that a little bit because of the, the structure and, and where it would be situated. How, how does that make things worse exactly? Well, it is uh, proposed to be built on a abandoned pier field um, that is uh, jutting out into the harbor right now. Um, the developer wants to rebuild that pier and uh, build two large structures on top of the new piers. Um, what those structures will do as uh, we start to get these storm events coming in will be to redirect, just like any uh, seawall might do, but th these will be massive seawalls, and they'll redirect the wave energy, the storm energy. Instead of absorbing the storm, which is what you want to do in the coastal zone, they will be amplifying the storm, and they will be making the situation worse for buildings around uh, their area. They will be increasing the flooding rather than trying to reduce the flooding, uh, which is what the city should be focused on. So for us, it's really just a question of making the problem worse. And uh, is this really the, what Boston needs to be working on at this point in time? Developers say that they have addressed some resiliency concerns that the city has. I mean, have you seen anything from them on that? Well, we've seen the renderings. We've seen their, you know, it's a, a fairly superficial analysis of um, uh, why their buildings are going to be able to survive an event. Uh, but they're really talking about yesterday's events. Um, we're talking about tomorrow's events, which are going to be far more severe. Uh, think Hurricane Sandy. Think about uh, Snowmageddon uh, in Boston uh, last year. And imagine that would be rain and storm, which could very easily happen, and what the impact of that would be in a place like uh, the, the waterfront. So um, I, I think their, their claims that they are going to be withstanding the sorts of storms we're looking at are fanciful. I want to circle back to what you said about this uh, setting a, a precedent, because if it's not just this location, um, what does this mean for waterfront development? We have that huge tower plan for the uh, Boston Harbor Garage site. I mean, does that mean we have to look at that differently, too, maybe? I think we have to look at the whole waterfront differently. Again, 
it's, it's hard for people to get their mind around this, uh, but we're looking at climactic conditions that humankind has never seen. The city of Boston has never seen the sorts of intense storms uh, that are forecast to be coming into this area. So really every part of the waterfront is going to be a strategic space for minimizing the impact on existing development um, and giving the city a chance to recover quickly uh, once those storms happen. And uh, the city has committed to this. The city knows that it has to meet this challenge, um, but this is the first test. And so for us, it's a very important test that the city pass. What about public access? There is some of that built into this plan, but you're saying that the developers are to do better. What does better mean exactly? Well, a lot of this, the public access they've talked about, like the uh, uh, continuing the Harbor Walk, which everyone enjoys so much, uh, and building a, a small park uh, are really trivial public benefits. The, pr the existing developer and property owner has been required to build that Harbor Walk for decades and has refused to do so. And uh, um, so the fact that this new development is now offering something that we should have had 10 years ago um, doesn't add very much. But for us, what's really important is to recognize that the big economic driver in this part of Boston is tourism. And tourism is more than a series of harbor walks. Uh, there need to be spaces like Columbus Park, uh, like the space in front of the aquarium. There need to be spaces that are designed to attract people, not just conduits through pe which people can pass. And uh, we want people to bring their families to the waterfront. We want the spaces to be big public spaces. And the public has a protected interest in these waterfront lands. And this particular proposal does not uh, give the public its due as far as uh, what they're offering. Uh, you mentioned uh, Columbus Park. I mean, what I see there are places, yes, people walk through, they enjoy the view, and they get it over with, but there are people who will stay there. For right, a long time. right. They have yeah. weddings, they have, uh, I mean, it is a destination. And what our harbor front is missing right now, and the opportunities to bring these sorts of spaces are, are growing more and more limited. Um, places that are destinations, where there is uh, entertainment programmed, where people can go for an afternoon and enjoy the experience. Uh, with this particular proposal, really the only space is a small lawn that's jammed between uh, two of the existing piers and is actually just uh, over top of the underground parking garage for this facility. So it's, it's sort of a cynical uh, response to the need, which is to, to, to really design something um, with, the, with the public in mind and with a public enjoyment and pleasure and uh, uh, tourism attraction built into it. Thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome. Peter Shelley from the Conservation Law Foundation. And we'll have more news in just a moment.